Final thing that I wanted to to touch upon is a video that you made about pacing. I think this is mm. a very interesting approach and one that I think a lot of the viewers will get some benefit out of because I have been through periods of pacing where, like you mentioned earlier, I would do nothing. So I would genuinely make a conscious effort to spend four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks doing as minimal as possible. You get into this point where supposedly I have no baseline symptoms. I have no day-to-day -day symptoms that bother me. And I found that it didn't work. I found that I still had symptoms. And then yet when I went and did stuff that was okay before, so a light walk or going outside, it would really, really trigger me. But then on the other hand, I've had periods where I've thought, right, I'm just going to push through it. And obviously, you know, I was able to push through it as I'm, uh, I'm quite fortunate that I haven't been bed bound or anything like that. And I would go and try and push through doing exercise and try and, and push through training. And yeah. it would cause me all sorts of, all sorts of symptoms and just generally like ruin the, the, the quality of my life. Cause I'm just pushing through becoming overstimulated and it's incredibly unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. I wondered if you could talk a little bit about your approach approach to pacing which was this kind of more balanced approach yeah. but one i think that was quite interesting and i think people will get a lot of benefit out of yeah that's a really good good question i think your experience that you you relate there is an important part of finding this kind of natural approach to pacing because it was the same for me it was like that willingness to try things without knowing how it's going to go but see what doesn't work is part of how each person for themselves will find a kind of natural pacing approach, you know? So it's a lot of people get stuck in the super strict approach, which like you related at the beginning there, where you just cut everything out and um, yeah, you go through this period where you're like, I'm going to do as little as possible. And you have to see that like, if that's not working, people, it's, it's kind of like what I was talking about at the beginning, like where I got stuck in the fear around, like trying this diet for a period of time and trying this pacing for a period of time and then being afraid to let go of that. And again, everybody has to do this in the way that works for them. But that kind of approach that you mentioned where then you also tried like pushing and, and seeing how that didn't work, but you were willing to step out of that like strict approach, which I think is really important because that's where a lot of people get stuck is that there's just too much fear around stepping out of it. But at the same time, yeah, it doesn't mean, like you said, like going, pushing too hard will overstimulate you too much as well. But that's how you can kind of come into a natural pacing approach is like, it's this willingness to not know how it's going to play out. And then you, your nervous system, yourself, your, your, your mind, you, you figure out what works for you, you know? So what I would recommend alongside this is also enough restorative practices like meditation and that kind of thing is what allows you to integrate more activity. So that, that's how it was for me. It was like, yeah, as well, I've gone through periods where I just kind of post full recovery where all the fear had, had gone, but I could see how, if I went back to a certain way of living where I just kind of ate unhealthily, I pushed myself really hard with high intensity exercise, I distracted myself. And I just didn't give my nervous system a break, like like you said, like overstimulated. Then I can I can start to feel really back into that uncomfortable state. But again, I feel like those phases were important for me to to remind me of the importance of certain practices. So it's not like you know, oh, I messed up, and that, like I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend anybody ever thinking like that, even if you have a big crash or a big flare up. Just, just use it as an opportunity to one, give yourself some compassion and say that like, you're not perfect and that's okay. And then instead of, you know, getting stuck on where you, um, where you messed up and what you should have done and getting stuck in the guilt and, uh, all of the, and the regret, it's okay. Acknowledge that, like acknowledge that, yeah, there's a part of me that's going to be upset. Uh, at the same time, this is, this is my opportunity to see what small changes can I make? You know, that's what mm -hmm. I always recommend from someone is don't set your expectations too high because that's almost when you're setting yourself up for failure. Like with anything, if, if, if somebody wants to learn how to meditate and they say, okay, I'm going to meditate. I've never meditated before. And I find it difficult to sit still for like 10 minutes. Like I just, I just want to get up and distract myself. Then to say, you know what, I'm going to take this really hard line approach and I'm going to meditate like two hours a day 
going forward. Sure, if that works for somebody, that's great. Like, but I think for ninety percent of people, and it, it was for myself, whenever I would set my expectations too high, then I would give up. You know, then I would kind of fall into this uh, this trap of like uh, setting your expectations so high that you're then like bound to fail, and then getting into the struggle of self criticism and judgment for why you failed. Don't do that. Like that. That's just it's it's not a it's not a healthy approach. Rather. Mm -hmm set yourself some small changes, right? If you feel for somebody that feels like they're just stuck, they can't get this pacing thing right. They keep on crashing. They keep on doing too much. Like that's okay. That's fine. Don't, uh, don't imagine this perfect pacing and try to chase that so that you never have a flare up or a crash again. That was important for me was like letting go of that, that real high expectation mode of I I'm only going to recover once I perfect my pacing. And, and rather see what can I do tomorrow, like one or two or three small things so that I don't, things that I know that will help me. And I know that I'll make them small enough that I can do them so that I don't feel as bad as today. And then you can start this kind of positive growth cycle of, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do two 10 minute meditations because today I did uh, zero minutes uh, or for the last week I've done nothing. And I know that I need to get back into that. Don't, don't set your expectations too high. Do one 10 minute, do two 10 minutes, whatever. But then do that for a while and then be willing to keep growing. Be willing to keep expanding. What happens if I do 15 minutes? What happens if I do 20 minutes? What happens if I do 25 minutes? And then that's how you get to meditating for like two hours a day and calming your nervous system as opposed to setting the bar too high and then being upset with yourself for not mm -hmm. doing it. So yeah. yeah, and then when when you introduce enough of those restorative things, then that's when you can also play with expanding your boundaries of like, okay, what happens if I, you know, go for a longer walk than I've been for? What happens if I do this? And then eventually you do want to kind of let go into the need to control, uh, like, like just not knowing. Like for me, it would be like, I, I remember the latest stages of recovery, like, sure, I'm going to play hockey and do this and do that. And it's going to be really busy. And then, like I said, at the start of this, um, this whole talk, uh, realizing then when you're doing too much, but not being too afraid of what's going to come up and, and being willing to, to push your button. Because I do know people that they're quite far down in the recovery path, but maybe now they're still trying to be too careful. You know, it's like they, they, they might mention that when they actually just go out and live, like they go and socialize and they go and exercise, they forget about symptoms and they're just kind of in the flow. That's great. Maybe, it, maybe it's time to just forget about symptoms and live. And then if at some point the symptoms do come back, don't, don't tell yourself a whole story of how, oh, I had recovery and now I've lost it. Just see what, what, where was I maybe getting out of alignment, out of the, the healthy approach that I found, right? Like mm -hmm. that's, that's what life has been like for me was like, you know, I did a lot of traveling. I, did, I pushed myself really hard. And then sometimes I would be like, okay, maybe I need to stop, slow down, do some more of the restorative practices. I would still, you know, there wasn't fear of, okay, I can't go for a hard run if I want to, but I just know that I'm going to feel like a little bit worse if I do that. So, you know, you, you just don't hold these, this high bar of where you need to be at all the time. It's like, sure, if you need to take a few days and rest, then do that. But one last thing, even, even on the rest days, I would still find it helpful to do small things, right? So if it's on a day where you just feel like, okay, I've been, I've been pushing myself a little bit too hard for a while, Maybe I need to just take it easy for a few days. I would often fall into the trap of then just spending the day like sitting on the couch watching TV or something like that. Rather see, like I, I found for me, like even on those days, instead of going to do some exercise or something, just, just to go and uh, sit and watch the, the sunset in the evening uh, or go mm. and sit on a park bench or something. Because whenever I would, even on a day where I felt like I needed more rest, whenever I would spend too much time locked indoors, I would actually start to feel worse. And, and then the fear can build up again of like the next day, I'm still not feeling good. So I'm still going to stay here. And then at, that's what you want at some point, just again, do something small, but you don't know how it's going to play out. Like I'm not feeling good, but I'm still going to drive my car somewhere. I'll maybe do a short walk. I'll go sit in nature. And then while I'm actually sitting out in nature, maybe going for a short walk, I'm actually feeling better than I was at home when I was saying, you know, I can't, I don't have the energy to go for a walk. Mm. I would often actually get energy sitting outside in nature, watching people walk by, 
you know, little things like that. 